All right, thanks for tuning into the Stamscapes channel. This is a little kind of a sneak preview of a sneak preview of some new designs I've been working on. We're coming up in the fall, and I've always wanted to have more uh, kind of Halloween types of designs um, that I can employ with my other imagery. Uh, spooky brand, spook cloud, stuff like that, you know. And I've done um, a lot of uh, Halloween types of scenarios using our existing designs, but I thought I'd really come up with some uh, designs more kind of suited for the uh, the holiday. All right, so let's just start off here. These aren't in any type of order. I just kind of printed out what I had so far. I still have some tweaking to do and some resizing, but uh, this is what I have so far. All right, so we have this kind of iron uh, fencing right here. Um, it could be used in smaller portions or whatever you want in between a couple of these posts. Okay, this is my larger size right here. I've resized it to a smaller one to um, fit right in with this column. And I see this column here or post or whatever as kind of an entryway into a graveyard scenario here. So I would probably keep the area open this would frame off an opening and of course we don't need two of these we just stamp this one and another one off to the side and then this fence kind of matches up and you can add as many or as few as you want and you what you do is you just put this right in between and then you stamp another one of these over here okay so i would probably do these ones first and then um, take and mask that off a little bit and stamp that right on in there like that. One thing about Halloween designs is if you don't get them kind of like perfectly straight, it doesn't matter because it's supposed to be kind of like a, a rundown, decrepit, you know, decaying, kind of a unkempt, you know, looking um, cemetery here. So if you get this a little bit off or something like that, or it's not connected up, you know, you can draw on the extra bars or something like that, or it can just be kind of messed up. And same thing with this, if it's kind of a little bit off, you know, from one another and not perfectly, uh, whatever, parallel with each other. One of them's tilting one way, one of them's tilting another way or something like that. You know, it could be all the better because that's the way your tombstones are going to go. All right. So anyway... Uh, let's see, some of these I printed on front and back just to save some paper. I just wanted to see things um, on the paper as opposed to just uh, on the uh, computer screen. When I start cleaning things up, I do it on the computer so I can get in. I can blow things up to whatever, 600% or something like that and go in and really work on the fine little details like in the hand on this one where this uh, kind of grim reaper is holding this pretty large size right here i'll put a pencil next to this so you can kind of get the idea this is one of those types of things where as a designer you have to kind of make a decision i you know it probably having two of these is just isn't necessary having one bigger is going to create more drama potentially but if you do it smaller it's cheaper for all of us to buy right and then I can, I'm going to have these in sets. So, um, you know, you can have more designs per set. So if I reduce this down and it's about, maybe about this size, um, you know, I can fit more designs. So you, instead of getting one Grim Reaper, you might get two stamps, you know, that can fit in that space up there, but you'll still have this. But I see this as something that would probably go in the background, you know, these little characters. All right, we have some pumpkins right here. All right. I'll probably do them in multiple sizes, um, you know, if we want to do it like a whole pumpkin patch. Kind of an old church, you know, we can have in the background for a, uh, a cemetery or just kind of this abandoned um, old church, like in a forested situation. It would be kind of spooky having like a dirt road or something, having trees flanking this or a little bit of a clearing, but then you have this old church in the background like that. It would be kind of uh, cool to see that. You can have um, a lot of tombstones around it too, you know, here in the foreground or pumpkins like that with this in the background. Can you imagine this with the full moon rising right in back of that? Some uh, tombstones, like kind of aged and 
weathered with a lot of uh, kind of almost like algae growing on it. An old uh, kind of castle-y looking church, you know. Um, and I put the uh, the lights on on the interior of this one. I, I'm probably gonna tweak this a little bit, and maybe put another lighting uh, light situation down here. Maybe lighten up the uh, the rooftop a little bit. It, it's kind of dark. It's kind of meant to be that way because it's supposed to be like this dark silhouette. I do most of my Halloween things at nighttime, just you know, for the uh, atmosphere of it. Okay, so. We want a nice solid silhouette, but I probably want a little bit more lighting in here. So I might clean that up a little bit um, on these little eaves and things like that. Okay. All right. Here's one of my favorite churches right here. Look at this. This one's kind of going off into perspective. And um, imagine that with a full moon or a sky full of bats or something like that. All right, one of the things I forgot to say on this one, on the back side of this, we have these tombstones. I really like these ones and the size of it right here that I have. So I can put these kind of leading back, you know, it's like a whole hillside or something like that. But I think these tombstones will look really good in the background. All right, we have some uh, larger tombstones like this. This is a little bit too large. I think this is probably about... I'll reduce it down to about a 75% version of this. I'm going to have a grouping of five, I think, but you know, you can stamp this out in the hole, but then you can stamp out like these two isolated ones or this one separately, you know, throughout a scenario. Let's say if you're doing like a larger full page um, scene or something like that, I think those would look good like that. But again, real kind of weathered and um, kind of made for backlighting. Backlighting in... Um, scary scenes it, it can be really dramatic it, it can be really dramatic in any situation which I do most of the time because we can draw shadows I don't have them in here right now because if I do a moon over here and the shadows are going this way it doesn't make sense so you leave the shadow areas for later sometimes they do a little bit of shading because you have to have a little base like that just so it looks good if someone doesn't add the shadows at all but you want to have a little bit of a foundation there so um, yeah, this might be one, one that's good in two different sizes. I don't know. When I have like extra space on a plate, it's like I tend to look at my other designs and say, okay, maybe I, if I do this one in two sizes, it's going to be really beneficial. And uh, something like the larger sizes would be good to do, like a medium size or something like that. But I have other ones too. Okay, now this is a really large um, kind of original right here, but um, we're going to really shrink this down again probably about 75 percent or something like that 70 maybe i don't think i'll go 50 percent, but it could be a 50 percent type of thing and be like a house up on the hill it almost looks like a you know uh you know norman bates type of a psycho house or something like that but victorian type of thing so haunted Victorian type of house with this. I debated on whether or not to have the, the walkway in here because if you take that off, then again, you can get more designs onto the plate. And, but this, I don't know, this, this stairway right here in the foreground, that can be pretty dramatic. And if you pair that up, you can even pair it up with the, uh, you know, something like this, you know, on, on each side of it like this, okay. Oh, and by the way, I left that light on the interior on so that, you know, we can add like a little bit of a glow to this and illuminate the inside. But interior lighting again um, with a lot of these windows right here. OK, so you can have that light coming out of the windows, you know, kind of ominous and kind of spooky. You can do it in different colors if you want to. It could be red or something. Curtains are closed in some of these, but again, they're light so that when you do this in a dark scenario the light is coming from the interior like that if it's a daytime type of scene you look at windows they tend to be dark okay things you know for halloween are a little bit spookier at night right okay well different type of cross right here for your cemetery bats okay kind of larger bats like that i think that's the size i'm going to go for in that grouping well, jack o' lantern right here with the interior lighting on the pumpkin. Kind of a flock of bats like that. 
you can stamp them in the sky, you can repeat this, you can do like a whole swirling type of scenario. The design was originally like this big, but it's like, I really wanted it, you know, to fill in this whole sky, but um, reduced it down, making it a little bit more universal, but you can also repeat it, you know, so you can get this whole scenario. Or if that's too much, you just ink up a few of these and then you stamp those out, okay? But it can be this whole swirling type of, you know, sky full of um, dramatic bat activity. <laughs> All right, so here's a couple other pumpkins like that. So these pumpkins right here are roughly the same size as, um, uh, let's see, where are those other ones? Right here. Okay, so we don't need, you know, these two, you know, that are roughly the same size here. So um, one of these will get reduced down so that we can use, um, you know, the other ones in kind of perspective. So I'll probably reduce these ones down. I, I, I tend to, I need to take a look at um, all of them that we have so I can get a better sense of it. A little zombie walking in the background, coming out of a cemetery or whatever, rising from the grave, or you can be walking down the street, you know. Yet if you take any type of scenario, it could be a happy kind of springtime scenario. And if you put like a deer in there or something like that, it has one certain type of emotional quality to it, right? If you put that in there instead of like some kind of animal or a person or something like that, you put the zombie in there, it's a horror scene, you know what I mean? So something is, this could be like a, a figure in an 11 by 17 scene or something like that. It could be, like I said, it could be a happy little scene, a flower field of bluebells and a forest floor. You have that guy in there, boom. You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, an episode of The Walking Dead or something like that. All right, here's another guy kind of walking off in the distance, you know. Another uh, one of those crosses. Kind of lean to the side a little bit and smaller. And uh, more really distant uh, tombstones. It's really small so I can fit it in an area on the plate and not make, you know, waste that area on a set. Again, so you can get more for your money's worth. What's a, uh, you know, a zombie scenario without a hand coming out of the ground like that, you know, so should be fun. Frankenstein for all you classic horror um, fans. And again, I kind of have it small, you know, it's like something you can throw in the background. But that is it, that's my sneak preview. These aren't ready to go, you know. Um, These will be formatted into a plate and uh, you know, we'll see what we have a uh, space for. Sometimes I start drawing, uh, you know, with uh, in regards to, um, you know, what I have space for. So I like, I like having a bunch of these really tiny um, designs like this. So I can fill in all those little blank spots on a set and, uh, you know, we can have a lot of little kind of details in our scenes, um, you know, for fun. But um, anyway, yeah, a lot more little things. I want to have like, a, I don't know, I'm thinking about like things like, uh, I, I shouldn't be talking about this before I do it because, you know, if I don't do it, then it's like, hey, where, what happened to that, uh, you know, that one design you were talking about? But I do want to have like a like a casket or something like that, you know, kind of like, you know, coming out of the cemetery or something like that. And things don't have to be like horrific or anything like that. They could be kind of like playful kind of things, you know, like that, you know, that type of thing. It could be a zombie carrying a, you know, a bouquet of flowers or something like that, or I don't know, some scenario like that. You know what I mean? Um, and the pumpkin things, uh, not all, all these aren't going to be on the same set either. Uh, the, like the cemetery one is going to be a separate thing. And I think the structures are going to be on a different one, uh, along with the, uh, the gates or something like that. Or maybe the gates are going to go on the, you know, with the ones with the tombstones. I guess that would make more sense. Um, I don't know. But then again, uh, those haunted structures and stuff like that with that, uh, perimeter fencing, that would make sense too. We'll see what we have room for and we'll just make the best 
um, use of the space. And some people say, you know, some people, I get it, you know, it's like, hey, I want that zombie, but I don't want all those other things. But um, these days, it's just, it's just kind of more practical to make, um, you know, one plate and I, I, you know, I charge like, you know, as if, you know, if someone was buying like half the plate, then you're getting like half of the other designs for uh, at no charge from what we would have to charge a la carte for each individual design. So it's just a lot more for your money's worth. And uh, it's just more practical from a manufacturing standpoint these days to put it into set form like that. So, um, yeah, um, some fun stuff coming out. I really like doing these types of... Uh, scenes it's just i don't know it's just kind of a little twist and it i don't know it really showcases uh, for me as a stamp designer um kind of the uh the range the personality range you know that you can really um utilize your you know stampscapes natural components for you know with something like this scenario right here you know uh, uh, the stamps have a lot of range, so cloud with moon, cloud with rising moon, the full moons on the uh, new nature sets, but not only that, just trees, pine trees or anything like that all around here. Um, we have the, the bayou set with the uh, Spanish moss types of um, branches hanging in from the side, you know, would look really cool in this type of setting, and it's like this old... Uh, you know, cemetery in the bayou or something like that, but it can take place anywhere. And, um, you know, you can really kind of expand on the range again of uh, all of your existing stamps. Um, doesn't have to have the word spooky in it again, like spooky branch and, you know, spooky moon and cloud and all that type of thing. But, um, you know, those ones are certainly um, tailor made for it as well. But uh, yeah, anything, Lakeside Cove, you know, with a zombie walking out of the water instead of a, you know, a kayaker on the surface or a fisherman or something like that. You have that guy walking out of there like that, you know, that's not kind of a scenario you'd want to be in. <laughs> in person, watching on TV or something like that would be good though. All right. So anyways, quick sneak preview. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next uh, video.